So, hello, hello, my dear friends, my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel. And today I bring you, as usual, this week's chapter of One Piece, chapter 977, the party is off. And starting, <coughs> sorry, by the beginning, we have the return of the cover story, ba Gang Badges, Oh My Family, volume 24. I wasn't aware that we were so far into this story. And surprise, surprise, the one in the barber shop was always Lola. I guess that throws out of the window all those other theories that they were both at the barber shop and that they were just accidentally mistaken by the by the Marines. I mean, I guess that that could still be it, but I want to believe that if we go back and see the cover where Lola was actually abducted, we would now look back and see that it is actually Lola. And I don't know if it's if it's just some creative adjustments right now, but when I'm as I'm now reading this again, I know that Lola's lips kinda seem to end I don't know if it's just a feature of the cheeks. Or her lips seem to finish in a in a little twirl. Maybe it's just me. And it seems that her upper upper lip is a bit more pronounced. Because what I saw some people saying is that the reason we couldn't distinguish her from Chiffon is that Lola Stoot was back and she had lost one by the time she was at Riller Bark, possibly due to her fight against the against Moria and whatnot, or maybe even before that. So some people thought, oh, okay, she's going to keep that, or rather, she's not going to have it. So it will, it would be, easy, it would have been easier to distinguish them. But maybe that's what meant. But that was the point of Oda was not was for us not to be able to distinguish between the two. So now I'm really not sure where this is going to go. We joked on not the last video, but the one before on 175 that had the cover. Uh, volume uh, 23 because the last one had the, the color spread I joked that Lola could marry Goatee and honestly at this point because 24 volumes is a lot already for a cover story most cover stories don't go past 30 32 I mean the decks of the world is an exception and uh, the one the one billion berry bounty man are exceptions just because they are so big and they go around all the worlds not the one billion berry man is it but the last one that had luffy that was about luffy's bounty and everyone reacting to luffy's bounty maybe it was the 500 million bounty i i, I don't know so yeah i don't see this cover story going much further ahead and sadly, I think we might have to forego of the low lace married to Lucky Road bandwagon. It's a shame because I really liked that bandwagon. It was cozy. It was fun. It was a merry band. But alas, I think we must let it go. So, moving forward to the chapter, we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have all the ten straw hats in a single panel. This right here is the money shot. Okay, we have Carrot there, and a lot of people will joke with this, saying, oh, Carrot's already a Straw Hat member. Okay, you do you, boo, you do you. It's, for me, it's neither, it's neither stink or smell. I just, I, couldn't care less for now, at least, if Carrot's on the crew or not. Honestly, I like her as a character. She's fun. She's a funny character. I wouldn't mind if they find a reason for her to join. I myself see the reasoning behind why people think she would join and how she has the prerequisites to, to join the Straw Hat crew to have a sad backstory, to have a dream, to have a quirky personality. 
The thing is... I mean, I don't know. At this point... At this point, I don't really know. Because there's that thing with Blackbeard's crew that I keep mentioning and that it's sort of true. It's that if the 10th Titanic captain is indeed Aokiji, then Luffy's crew does not need anyone else. In terms of numbers, to go against Blackbeard is complete. If the 10th Titanic captain is somebody else, well, then that might be different. For instance, if indeed Moria joined Blackbeard's crew, then Moria can take Aokiji's supposed place. We we're talking, uh, we're talking, we're talking dreams here. So I don't know. I'm okay with Carrot. Oda put her here. I wanna believe because she met Jinbei at Whole Cake Island. She kind of created a bond with him. So. I don't see this as the de facto confirmation that, oh, we're oh, right here, you know, carrot in the group. But, okay, we'll, let us not detract from that. This is the money shot of this chapter, the nine, the ten straw hats together in one place after seven bloody years. Seven Years, you know, uh, that is seven years, 2013. I was on my second year of my first degree in university. That's how long ago that was. Like, I was 19 years old at that time. So goddamn, 18 still because because my my birthday is in July. So, 18. I was 18 years old. Yay. So yeah, there's a bit of banter going on back and forth. Uh, Nami and Chopper explain to Frankie that Jinbei is a proper helmsman and to which Frankie says, okay, so finally someone will take, will take good care of the Sunny and will make full use of this ship. They decide to make a toast, but then they remember they have no booze. But this is the funny thing. Zoro turns up and says, actually, I smell booze. And Sanji is like, from where? And it, it's 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 this is so very straw hat, and I love this first part because of this. Is this so very straw hat? While everyone else is just trying to discuss strategy, even Kinemon just calls them. Oh, come here! We we need we need to figure out the plan. And Law's like, dude, dude, just 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 let it go. As the French say, let's tombe, let's tombe, Kinemon, then there's no point, let, let, let him go, let him go, 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 go get your booze or something, I don't care. Law is just like, I don't care, he even says later on that no matter what the plan, there's always two idiots, not to mention names, but, you know, a certain guy with a certain hat and a certain guy with a certain goggle set. I don't want to mention names. The thing is, also has a hat, so... <laughs> no, a certain someone with a straw hat and another guy with spiky hair and goggles. Two idiots, as he calls them, but we'll get there eventually. Sicilian hops on board of the polar tank to take charge and command of the Minx, while Hyogoro uh, volunteers to take charge of the Samurai, so as to take the load from both Inuarashi and by proxy Nekomamushi, even though he hasn't yet arrived, and Hyogoro <coughs> from, um, from Kinemon, Denjiro and... Well, Kinemon and Denjiro, really, they, they were the de facto leader figures for the samurai. We can we can argue that all the scabbards kinda are. But Kinemon is the leader and Denjiro was the de facto not the de facto. Kinemon is the de facto leader and the one that really is the leader of the samurais. Denjiro is more like his proxy. Like he was the one that brought all of them together. You know, Denjiro is kinda like the lieutenant. 
if if we're going by that logic. So all of them get together in in the polar thing and they start discussing the plan. We get our first pseudo proper introduction to to Onigashima and it's a very very interesting island because it's an island surrounded by mountains and there's only one entrance. Typical, I know. It's guarded by a Tori gate, which we'll play later in the chapter, as you all know. And this is the thing, I'm very curious to see Onigashima because Pirate Warriors 4 just released, like, at this point, two, three weeks ago, something like, something like that. Yeah, quasi through three weeks ago. And they have an Onigashima map on that game. In fact, the, the very first mission of the game is Onigashima. So, I mean, not Onigashima, it's Zwano, but the, the, the quasi-last missions of the game are in Onigashima. But in, in the introduction video to that mission, we see Onigashima. With, like, volcanic mountains and whatnot. The, the skull itself is the shape of a... Of a it's, it's a rock skull, it's not an actual skull, it's a rock skull. So, we don't know how privy to information were the devs of the game in order to make the Onigashima map. So, because we have yet to see Onigashima properly in the anime. We have seen in the opening and looming in the back, the skull or not, not looking menacing. But we have yet to see the proper Onigashima, even in the manga. We are, they are already at Onigashima, but they haven't shown Onigashima. I really hope the next chapter, much like we had the money shot, this money shot on this chapter, I want the next chapter's money shot to be a shot of... No, no. Next chapter... I'll, I'll come back to the money shot in a bit. But I would like to see this as a secondary money shot, you know? Just a pan out, double page. Oh well, but the double page. There's a lot of good things up to happen in the, up to happen next chapter. Well, we're gonna need a lot of double pages then. <laughs> because there's a lot of things. But yeah, a double page, not a double page, maybe just a big a big chunk of a page could be with like a full frontal view of Onigashima past this entrance. Imagine they get at the entrance because it appears to be some distance be between the Tori gate and the distance. So between that, we could see like Onigashima in his full glory and it would be the very first time we get to see Onigashima. So the Samurais and, and Law keep discussing the plan. Kinemon tells them the true plan that it was the plan he told Kanjiro, and it was the only plan he had. And then Jiro is like, ah, I see. So that was the plan you revealed to Kanjiro's presence to deceive him. So what is the real plan? And Kinemon is like, uh, honestly, I was expecting more. I, not more, I say more, but not more. I was expecting Denjiro to only be playing along with the whole plan thing, just to make the samurai, just to rally the samurai. But apparently the guy is just as clueless as they are. Which I don't really know how I should feel about. Honestly, because... I know that Jiro can have a fanboyish outlook to him. We saw that when he first met Odin. And I believe that at this point he would have developed a certain... A certain degree of admiration for Kinemon as well. I mean, they are the not the oldest in terms of age, but the oldest in terms of having joined Odin. So they are the oldest in the scabbards. They are they are the OGs. So I would imagine that they developed such a bond that Denjiro would be able to know. Look. I know that was bullcrap. I know that you really misread the message, just like the other scabbards did. I thought that that was what happened. And that when he got together with him, he would say something like, Listen, I know. But right now, 
we need them to think that you're this real master strategist. So unless Benjiro thinks that the rest of the scabbards were also fooled and he's keeping the ruse, I really don't see a reason for him to keep believing this. It's sad, but I think it will stay so unless at the end of the battle Kinemon just goes like, oh, you know, Denjiro, actually it was all you. I don't know, maybe Kinemon comes up to him and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to quit the scabbards or something. I'm still going to support Lord Momonosuke, but I'm going to quit the scabbards. I'm going to live with my wife and something. You are the you are the leader now, Denjiro. And he's like, oh, what? But, but boy, I, I, am, I am not worthy of your title. And he was like, no, you are because this, this and that. You are the one who actually deciphered the message. Well... Everyone deciphered the message, but Kinemon. Uh, you were the one that rallied the samurais, you were the one that led them here, so it's you. Unless it's for that, I really don't see the reason why you should keep thinking this. But yeah, so Law makes a plan. He really plans on letting Kid and Luffy go. Kid and Luffy go. Uh, up front, there's even a little diagram that has three arrows, one to the right, one to the left, and then one straight up front that says, idiots. <laughs> this is really something long. And yeah, he's trying to, to introduce a pincer technique, whereas you have a distraction and you have people that go from the right and the left, and then eventually all of them collide and they trap the enemy. It could work. But alas, this is an alliance between Orochi, Kaido and Big Mom we're talking about here, so... Who knows? Who knows how this is gonna work? Okay. So... He thinks about sending them... The scabbards, that is. Through the back. But Kinemon says, no, no. I need to be there. So... And then Jiro says, I'm gonna be there as well, so... Apparently, Denjiro and Kinemon are going to go to one of the fronts. The rest of the scabbards, however, appear to, dis to have decided to go through the back. I don't think that's very smart, honestly. Because I think it'll put them in a situation where they will end up... ...pseudo-defeated. That's really it. Pseudo-defeated in a very bad situation for them. And I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Kinemon's face is just... <laughs> he's just so smug. And Raizo is like... You can see the sheer disappointment in Raizo's, in Raizo's face. It's just like... Is this the guy I signed up to follow? Is this really the guy I signed up to follow? Like, <laughs> you can see it in his face. It's so cool. And yes, Luffy's ship has disappeared. And out of, out of nowhere, an explosion comes out from the Tory gate. And everyone thinks, oh my god, the Straw Hats were defeated. Poor kid. Poor Denjiro. Why ever would you think that Luffy and his crew would lose to such fodder? And here we have it. All the Straw Heads fight together except Nami, Usopp and Chopper. I was so, so disappointed when I saw that they weren't fighting. I really was. I'm sorry. I love them. I know that most of them... I mean, Usopp and Nami... They've been given the shorter end of the stick. Even Chopper. But Nami specifically. Nami does, hasn't had a fight. A proper fight. Um, I'm going to be... I'm going to be nice here and say since Fishman Island. Okay? I'm going to be nice. Even though a lot of people don't count... And I mean, it shouldn't be counted because she didn't face anyone proper. Nami's role has been relegated to a support role after the after the, the time skip. 
And that's okay. Fishman Island, there wasn't really a lot of reason for... There wasn't a lot of people for them to fight. Everyone else was... Was busy. And it was not like Oda would make a... A Fishman woman. Which... Apparently doesn't even exist because they're all mermaids, I think. So... It, there's no reason why Oda would put a mermaid... Two mermaids just so that Robin and Nami could fight because that's what would have ended up, ended up happening. Nami so far has only fought against women. There's Miss. What the hell was her name? <laughs> I forgot. Miss. Um... Miss Monday. It was Miss Monday. There was Miss Monday from Baroque Works, and there was Khalifa. Those are the two noteworthy fights of Nami since ever. So here I was super pumped seeing Luffy punch out a goat looking guy, Jinbei doing a punching another guy, Zoro with Emma and uh, Sandaki Tetsu just skadooshing another guy, Brook freezing one, Robin stomping. Sanji's is the best. Sanji's like so graceful with cigarette in hand, just Sanji's like doing ballet or something. Frankie punching or shooting or whatever. And then you have the weak trio. Just, just peeking over the board of the Sunny. You know, you're in a hype. You're in a roller coaster. You're, you're already here. You're already high. You're pretty high. It's a pretty high roller coaster, mind you. But then you see Luffy fighting, you see Jinbei fighting, you see Robin, Brook, Zoro, Sanji, you see Frankie, and then you expect to see the rest. But I don't know, maybe they decided that this roller coaster is high enough. I mean, you can't even see my arm anymore. And I'm sure this looks ridiculous from this point of view. But then you don't see them. And it's like you come to a sudden halt in expectations. I know it's in keeping with the characters. I know they're gonna end up fighting in the main battle. I am expecting that at least. I was really just hoping they could have done something else. And then they have the nerve of sheer, of cheering. Yay, you did good. Okay, and I was like, yay, they did. You didn't. You were just there. Disappointment. I still love them. <clears throat> I still love these three, not saying otherwise, but I was really, really bummed about it. Because it could have been yet another money shot. Having all of them... Because then we have the colors, the, the color spread. Oy, oy, oy. We have the double page with all of them who fought. And they, those three are missing. I mean, how much better would it have been if all three of them were there? If all ten of them were there together with the three that stayed on a boat? See what I mean? It would be it would have been an extremely rewarding this could this double page had the potential to be the money shot. Like because we have them all just nonchalantly after fighting. Sanji just sitting on top of a guy smoking. Frankie rearranging some, some guns or something. Robin looking big as Robin does. Brooks just as well with, with, with his with his hand on his pocket and like oh you ho ho Luffy on top of these big guns Jinbei like just there and Zoro smiling with a jug of sake in the hand imagine how it would have been to have like Usopp cowering there with his boot on top of a small fry guy or Chopper j just jumping happy because he did something and Nami maybe just complaining to Luffy, why are you always so reckless? 
It would have been perfect. I, I, I would I would have loved it. But yes, they cleared the checkpoint. Everyone arrives at at the Tori Gate in Onigashima. They plan on doing a toast, but then Luffy f orders it to be postponed until they actually win the battle. So yeah, we'll see. <coughs> there's a very there's a very fun scene with Kid. Um, Kid just tries to bl blaze on ahead and leaves them behind. And we see that Killer is still, well, you know, affected, of course, by the by the smile. Maybe not so much now, but he's still he's still laughing in every sentence. But he's able to because there was there was a bit of confusion because we hadn't seen Killer talk all that much while he was posing as Kamazo. So much so that I myself thought that he was left so mentally scarred that his brain had just short-circuited. But no, apparently not. He was able to hit this face again to use his mask again, so... Maybe that's a good thing, and I really hope that there's a cure that Chopper... Chopper will have to find a cure, because there's a lot of people in Wano afflicted by this. Not just Ki, there's a lot of people in Wano. You have Tama. You have all the people in, in Ibisu Town, where... where Yasuye was, was based on. Like, Chopper will eventually find a way to dispel this... this drug. So... Yeah, Kid makes a declaration that he'll put Kaido's skull on, on his ship's prow. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. You lost an arm to Shanks. Shanks. The Mr. Peaceful unless you mess up with my friends guy. So I don't want to know what you did to him that weren't your arm loss. But dear Eustace Kid, please be mindful. When fighting against Kaido, you already got your ass whooped once, so be careful with the declarations. <laughs> and of course, they turn into, into a competition. Jinbei is on his is on his seat, just I, I I could have imagined a scene if whenever this gets to the anime, I could imagine a scene where Jinbei just goes like to the spot. And he like, he sits and he snags and he like, he takes the helm, I'm ready, let's go. And like, let's go, Captain. <laughs> like, ready to pull up some drift and, and burn some, burn some waves. Yeah, I, I, I would like to see that. It would be very funny. Like, to see Jimmy just, it doesn't need to be anything that big, just like I did. But, some, you know, Jimmy sits down and just, just to the side, just warming up to the place and then... Then, and then you see him grabbing the helm, he's like, Ah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back where I belong. Behind the wheel. Yeah, it, it, it would be fun. But, ooh, now we get, now we get to the, to when, to where everything happens and nothing should have ended. We see one of the numbers. I really, really like it. his shadow design. You know what it made me, what it reminded me of? Uh, Vicar Amelia from Bloodborne. I don't know if you played Bloodborne. I am playing Bloodborne right now, and I actually defeated Vicar Amelia yesterday, that being Sunday. And when I read this chapter, I was like, huh, it kind of looks like her, because she, end up, she ends up transforming in this beast that's sort of like a dog sort of thing, like, paws and claws and whatnot, and I was like, this looks like Vicar Amelia from Bloodborne. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that, but I did. We see someone playing the the shamisen, or I think it's the shamisen, I always make the... We see Orochi telling probably some geishas to, to come closer to him. We see King... Uh, King. We see Queen... Um, ordering more Oshiroku, Oshiroku, but of course they are doing it for Big Mom because they must please Big Mom. 
And then comes the golden revelation. Kaido just out of nowhere asks, where is my son? And we are like, well, I say, say what, Mr. Kaido? So yeah, Kaido has a son. Who knew? <laughs> I mean, sadly, this does seem to to entail that the Kaido is Katakuri's father theory go down the drain. Of course, there was that interview made by those YouTubers, those Japanese YouTubers. Um, that made it seem like, oh, they had already confirmed that that was not the case. That could be applied to, to any of Big Mom's children, of the first children. They could be referring to Compot, Perospero, more, mostly Perospero, because Perospero is the oldest. But no, they, they were obviously asking after Katakuri, so Oda said no, and I want to believe that it confirmed so. But Kaido has a son. This could be worrisome, because we could be looking potentially at an insider ally situation. Of course, we already have X-Drake, Diaz Drake. I think that he's gonna end up joining the Alliance sometime soon during the battle. Because after all, he is a marine. He's undercover to discover the secrets of the of the beast pirates, and I think that if he had a chance to take them down, if I was there, <coughs> if I was there, <coughs> and there was like this rebellion going on, and if at any point I would be able to jump ship and do my job, I would do it. So. Drake will probably flip sides during the battle. So, yeah, and speaking of Drake, the Flying Six have arrived. And, of course, we only see their feet. <coughs> we see Drake a little bit on the back, probably with page one, the one with the baggy pants and the tiny feet is probably page one. Uh, there's another... I don't know if page one is the one with the white coat or if it's the other right next to him. If it's not the one with the with the white coat, then page one is the one without coat. There's one with the white coat. And one with... Sort of ele ele elegant um, shoes. Another one with those wooden shoes. And apparently is the one wielding the katana. With a very cool flower flowery design and then we have a lady that's all we get out of the flying six and next week there's no chapter it says here on the official release next chapter hits april 26 and april 26 is from yesterday to two weeks that's because of you guessed it Corona. So it's not necessarily meaning that someone in Shonen Jump is infected per se. And I saw the news at that website I mentioned. I keep mentioning this. It's, it's the One Piece X website. It's the Brazilian website. They are always on top of, the, of their game with the news and they're really, really good. Again, if you know Portuguese or if you're Portuguese slash Brazilian, I really, if you're Brazilian you're, and you like One Piece, you probably follow OPEX. So, because they're that good. Every One Piece fan in Brazil has an obligation, a moral obligation to follow them. And I myself, as a Portuguese, I also follow them as well, even though there are significant differences in, not significant, but Never mind. I still follow them because they do great content and they're awesome. When it comes to news of the, the, the Shonen Jump, 
when there's mag and when there's not. They're always on top of their of their game. So yeah, 978 will not release next week. It will release on the last week of April. So we'll have a week without One Piece. I don't know what I'll do next week in terms of One Piece, but we'll get there when we get there. We cross that bridge when we get there. This was a very cool chapter. Again, as I mentioned, there are three money shots in this chapter. Uh, there's the first. There's the first panel with all the straw hats together. Um, there's the panel with them after the fight, which could have been so much better, as I said. And there's the Toby Roku or the Flying Six. It's funny because this this name Manga Plus decides to keep, whereas Zolo, they. Bleh, like, they don't translate Toby Ropu or Akazaya and then they do something like Dog Storm and Cat Viper. Seriously, the inconsistency is, is showing. And as a student of translation myself, eh, inconsistencies is not something you, you want to have. Either you translate everything or you don't translate. You have to decide. Now, I know I've learned recently, I've, I've been informing myself about why it's Zoro and not Zoro. It's because when they started translating officially, the, the Viz, when Viz officially started translating, there was no official romanization. So, Zoro ended up being Zolo by some reason, despite the fact that I don't even think Luffy calls Zolo, Zoro Zolo, in the early stages of the anime. But never mind. If they were going by fanatics alone, it should have been Zoro. But, alas, it's not my job. I'm not the one translating it. I just. It's one of those scenarios that when you learn about things <coughs> and you have a small knowledge on it and you learn some things a certain way, and then you're like, it's like when I was on my first degree, it was a, an environmental health degree. And we learned all kinds of things about health and safety in, in workplace and of food safety and whatnot. And I, whenever I went to a restaurant, I noticed myself looking over all the, the licenses and the emergency plans. And I was like, what am I? doing it was just it's just let's see let's see well how this is so it's kind of like that so i find it funny that they decide to translate some things and then there's and, and they have some some weird translation choices some weird decisions in there but then they decide to keep toby ropu without any explanation whatsoever. I mean, maybe in the earlier chapters when the group was mentioned, they have the explanation. Honestly, I doubt it because of the chapters I've been reading, they have they don't have footnotes everywhere anywhere. So, and it's just a weird decision for, for me because it's, translation is all about decision making. I know, but those decisions also have to be well justified. Again, they might have to justify it to their to their bosses, not to us, but still, I find it weird. Maybe because they decided, well, flying six, but none of them fly, maybe, I don't know. Because the ones we know, one is an Allosaurus and the other is a Spinosaurus. None of them exactly fight. And I don't think that we'll have any flying among them. I really hope that one of them has a tooth saber. A saber tooth, a tooth saber. Oh god, a saber tooth, a saber tooth, tiger devil fruit. And we'll see about the others. Maybe one of them doesn't have a devil fruit. Who knows? But they are Kylo's crew, so they will have a Zoan devil fruit, of course. 
So yeah, we know the Allosaurus, we know the Spinosaurus, and I really want one of them to have a a saber tooth tiger devil fruit. That'll be cool. Watch one of them have the T-Rex. And and I don't know, have Imagine that a panel with a banter between X Drake and the one who has a T-Rex fruit. And they and they are like, ah, oh, so you think just because you look like me, you are me, but but no, T-Rex was the apex predator and Drake's like I don't care if we look similar. I don't care if people mistake us from one another. Let's just fight. Yeah, I'm doing this because I imagine Drake saying this on his transformed form. So Never mind, let's just go. It would be a nice touch because for so long we thought that X Drake had the 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 T Rex fruit, but no, alas, he didn't. So yeah, this was it for this week's chapter. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I certainly did. It was a fun chapter. These the end the end pages the end double page was just amazing. Really, the end page was just amazing. We saw one of the numbers, uh, even if in shadow form. We saw the flying six, if only their feet. We know that Kaido has a son. Uh, Big Mom is dressing, uh, is getting changed into a kimono. And yeah, I can only hope that next chapter we get at least the flying six shown. Like, and Big Mom. I don't want to see Kaido ne Kaido's son next chapter. We could see him. I would be okay with that. But I really, really... Ju I just want the Flying Six. Kaido's son can wait for his own chapter. Make Kaido's son appearance be in chapter 980. That that would be a cool thing for, for, a, for a round number chapter. For a... For a 10th chapter. 980 could have... Um, could have Kaido's son. And another thing. When do you think they're going to make the break of the act? Because, I don't know. Maybe this third act will go for longer than, than we think. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm going to have to turn off this video. Because it has been going on for quite a while now. And I have other stuff to do. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and this chapter as much as I have. So, please do let me know in, the, in the, your opinion in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys next time for some more One Piece. So, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.